Okay, so I decided on the topic for today, Detox Without the Deprivation, because it's a new year, and the new year always feels like a fresh start. And I thought it was a great time to talk about detoxing, because detoxing is essentially a fresh start, and it's like hitting the reset button on your body. So who here has done a detox before? Wow, okay, good number of you. I guess we're in New York City, we're at Pure Bar, everyone's pretty healthy. <laughs> And how many of you have never done a detox, but, and you feel like it's something a little scary, you don't really want to give up food for five days? Okay, yeah, I figured. There's definitely, there's, it sounds a little scary, I promise you it's not. Um, so what I hope to do today is really clear up any confusion about detoxing and explain what role it should play in your life. So how I'm gonna do that, we'll start with talking about why you want to detox. And then I'm going to walk you through the five um, signals. I like to call them your SOS signals that your body is going to send out, that it's time to do a detox. And then after that, I'll get to the juicy part, which is how to detox or what's the best way to detox. All right. So let's start at the beginning with why you want to detox. And I'm sure you've heard there are some people that say we don't need to detox because our body naturally does it. And that's true, our body does naturally detoxify itself. We wouldn't be alive if it didn't have some detox you know, processes built in. But here's the thing, in 2014, we are just bombarding our body with toxins from every angle. And so what happens is our detox system starts getting backed up. It starts getting sluggish and it starts not working as good as it should. And that's when our body's gonna start sending out those SOS signals that I talked about. So before I explain what those are, let me just delve in a little bit deeper about all these toxins. So if our body can handle a certain you know, baseline number of toxins, what we're doing is we're adding on to that, right? So we're eating these processed and packaged foods that are loaded with chemicals that we can't even pronounce. We're eating meat that has synthetic hormones in it. It has antibiotics in it. We're taking antibiotics anytime that we get sick. You know, we're drinking, we're smoking, um, we're breathing in pollution every day, right? Because it's not just what we eat that builds up toxins. It's, it's what we're breathing in. It's what we're putting on our bodies. So we just keep bombarding it with all these toxins. So we have this huge toxic load, but our body can only process so much. And then at the same time, you know, a lot of us are not even giving our detox organs what they need in order to function properly. So those are, you know, our kidney, our liver, our lungs, even our lymphatic system, our skin. We have a number of organs that neutralize and remove toxins from our body. But unless you're really giving them the nutrients they need, they can slow down and they might not work as they should. So, um, so what happens when you have that huge toxic load, your body can only handle so much. Whenever you get this gap, that's when your body is gonna send out the SOS that it's time for a change. So these are the five things that you wanna look out for. And if you have any one of these, you don't need all five. If you have any of one of these symptoms, it's definitely a good time to try a detox. So the first symptom, um, or the first sign you wanna do a detox is your skin. A lot of times skin is gonna be the first place that we're gonna notice like a toxic overload or that something's wrong. It's really, it what, it's what connects our inside to the outside world and it's usually a very good bellwether of what's going on inside. So if you're having breakouts, for example, believe it or not, that's usually a sign of a food allergy, right? Very commonly that's what it's a sign of. And so that means you're feeding your body something that's toxic to your body. Um, and so by doing a detox, you're gonna be eliminating whatever that is and adding in um, the good stuff that's gonna nourish your body and that can, can reverse that. Uh, same thing with rashes. Sometimes when we're ingesting toxic things or slathering toxic things on, our body can break out in this rash, we don't know why. Um, and it's really just our body's way of telling us that something needs to change, that we're giving it something that it doesn't need. Now besides for you know, the breakouts, which is kind of an obvious you know, SOS, just your complexion also can be an indicator. So if you have you know, dull or lifeless skin, that can be a sign that you're not giving your body the nutrients that it needs. Now, a lot of people don't realize that our skin, it's our largest organ, and whenever we eat, um, the nutrients that we eat, our skin is the last place that's gonna get those nutrients. So our body has a hierarchy of who gets the vitamins and minerals first, so our vital organs will get them first, right? So our heart, our lungs, our brain. 
Um, and then once those organs get the nutrients, whatever's left over goes to the non-vital organs and skin is really the last man on that totem pole. So you need to eat an abundance of nutrient dense foods to really get that clear, glowing, healthy skin. All right, so that's the first sign that it's a good time for a detox. The second sign that it's a good time for a detox is your energy level. So if you are experiencing low energy, it's probably a sign that you're fueling your body with something that's slowing it down. Now, how many people here feel like they need a coffee to get through the day? Okay. <laughs> Most people, I, I'd be shocked if no one's hand went up. Most people, um, you know, we kind of get into this cycle where it's like we either wake up tired and we need a coffee to wake us up, or, you know, it's, it turns, you know, three o'clock and all of a sudden we just want to crawl under our desk and die because we have no energy. So, so we, you know, we run out to Starbucks. Um, so if that's the case for you, a detox can definitely help. Everybody in this room is very young. Um, we should all really be at the peak of our health and we should be able to get through the day without a stimulant, without a coffee. So you'd be surprised that actually taking out, sometimes taking out the coffee or whatever it is that we're using, you actually end up with more energy. So that's sign number two, that it's a good time for a detox. A third sign that a detox is in order is sugar cravings. So sugar is something that we all know is bad for us, right? But we all eat it, right? And most people are eating it every day. We love it. It tastes good. I know it tastes good. Um, but we know it's bad, right? So we know it causes weight gain. We know it can break us out. It's anti, it's not anti-aging. It causes premature aging, right? So it can cause wrinkles. Um, it can cause illness, it weakens our immune system, right? It's been found to um, feed cancer and tumor cell growth, right? So we really know there's really nothing good about sugar except that it tastes good in the moment. Um, and we usually feel like crap after we eat it too, right? So um, we know that it's bad for us, we still end up eating it. I know I used to eat it every day, um, but it's not something you want in your body. So there, most people are surprised to learn that you can actually completely get off sugar or at least reduce it. Um, and one of the best ways I find to do that is doing a detox, right? So there's a number of steps that you can take to get off of sugar. And I find with my clients that a detox is one of the best ones, a food detox like I'm gonna talk about later. So what a food detox does is during that short period while you're on it, um, you're gonna be flooding your body with everything that it needs so it doesn't even want the sugar. And then after the detox is over, you're not gonna want the sugar anyway because now your tongue starts to recalibrate and your taste buds rather. And what was once really delicious to you is now like sickeningly sweet and you don't even want it anymore. Like it just you know, doesn't call to you at all. So that's, um, so if sugar cravings, uh, a detox can really, really help with you getting over them. The fourth sign that it's time for a detox is digestive issues. So these digestive issues are very, very common. Um, and so if you're experiencing things like gas and bloating, and diarrhea, constipation, like consistently, most likely you are feeding your body something that it can't digest properly or that you're allergic to, right? So that's why you're gonna consistently have those problems. and doing a detox is going to cut out all of those foods that are most likely to cause these issues. Um, and so then you can really understand, you know, if it is a food allergy that's causing your issues, um, and then you'll know what you want to add in and what you don't want to add back after your detox is over. So that's a good, um, a very good reason. Digestive issues, a detox can really help with that. Okay. And the fifth sign that a detox is in order is if you're having trouble losing weight. So this is a really interesting one. Um, what some researchers have found is that when people hit a plateau in weight loss, right, so they're doing everything healthy, they're eating healthy, they're exercising, they've lost some weight, and then the scale just stops, right? What they think that is, is that person has like a toxic overload and their body is trying to protect them so it's holding on to the weight, right? So toxins are stored in our fat cells. And 
your body doesn't want to shrink your fat cell, even if you're doing everything all right, because the toxin's inside. So if it shrinks and pushes the toxin out into your bloodstream, you're going to have a way bigger problem than not fitting into your skinny jeans. So that's why your, bo your body just holds on to the weight until you can safely get those toxins out of your body. So um, by that school of thought, undergoing a you know, pretty strict detox can help your body get rid of everything, and then you should be able to start losing weight again. So those are the five SOS signals that a detox is in order. Um, I mean, just in general, it's a great way, again, to kind of reset your, reset your body. And so you don't have to have, again, all five. You really just need one of those to, to warrant um, a detox and benefit from one. So now that we know what the, what the signals are, let's talk about what is the best way to actually detox. Usually when we're talking about a detox, we're talking about something short term, so three to five days, sometimes it's more or less, and we cut out all of the toxic substances um, and we add in something that's going to support our natural detox system, all those organs that I talked about. And usually when people go on a detox, right, and maybe some of you can attest to, right, so usually you're going to lose a couple pounds, your energy is going to go up, your skin's going to look clearer and brighter, right? Pretty much all those SOS symptoms that I talked about, right, a detox can help reduce or eliminate all of those symptoms. But here's the most important thing I'm going to tell you all day. If you go on a short detox, you're only going to have relief from your symptoms for a short period of time, right? So if you go back to your pre-detox ways of bombarding your body with toxins all the time, eating bad food, drinking a lot, smoking, right, all of these things, um, your symptoms are going to come right back. So personally, I think the biggest benefit that anyone can get from doing a short detox is the motivation to actually keep up with their healthy habits once that detox is over. So I find a lot of times, a lot of people really go through life just not feeling good, right? Feeling like crap, but you just get used to it. So you keep, you know, you don't really think, think about it anymore, right? So you get used to covering up your, you know, your breakouts with makeup all the time. You get used to keeping Pepto-Bismol in your purse, right? You get used to going to Starbucks every day. And it just becomes second nature. So you, you never give it another thought. But what a detox does is it sort of serves as a wake-up call that you can actually feel good every day, you can have energy, right? Your skin can be clear. Um, so I think that's the biggest benefit that you'll ever get from doing a short-term detox is that it's going to kick-start some long-term healthy habits. Now, um, what we're going to talk about today specifically is a food detox. So um, there's many different ways you can detox, right? I'm sure most people have done juice cleanses, right? There's detox pills, detox smoothies, detox teas. Um, what I want to focus on is a, um, a food detox because that's how you're going to detox without the deprivation. So you're still going to be able to eat, but you're going to get all of those benefits of you know, reducing and eliminating those toxins and supporting your natural detox system. I will um, just call out juice cleanses really quickly because I know they're really popular. We have some juice here, right? I've done juice cleanses before. They're totally great, and if you want to do one, that's great. Um, but kind of going along with what I just said, you know, I would, instead of you drinking five green juices a day for five days once a year, you're better off drinking one green juice a day every day, 365 days a year, right? Okay, so let's talk specifically about the food detox. Now, um, there's a few general guidelines, right? So in general, you want to cut out anything that um, could be slowing down your system and causing any of those, these issues. So first and foremost, anything packaged has to go for sure. Um, even if it's like healthy packaged food, it's off the list for the week. Um, animal products, so meat, dairy, fish, all that stuff is, um, is going to be off the list for, for the detox week because that can slow down our digestion and slow down our detox processes. Wheat, which is a very, very common allergen, that goes off the list. Soy, alcohol, caffeine, so coffee. Um, so all of those, those things um, we're, we're going to stay away from for the three or five day period that you're on a food detox. 
And instead, you're going to add in foods that are just going to naturally support your overall health and, and in particular, your detox organs. So that's going to include um, fruits and vegetables. The vegetables don't have to be raw. You can cook them. Um, raw nuts and seeds, whole grains, legumes, pretty much anything that's whole food and plant-based. And this is going to give your digestive system a break from all that stuff that's a bit harder to process. And at the same time, you're going to flood your body with micronutrients and all the vitamins and minerals and everything that it needs. Now, when I lead you know, clients through a detox, in particular, I like to focus on 15 specific foods that I find work together very well to really cleanse the body from every single angle. Um, so each food is going to work on a specific organ or a specific detox me mechanism to work together synergistically, bless you, um, to work together synergistically to you know, cleanse um, and support the whole detox system. Now I'm going to share four of those with you. So these are very powerful detoxifiers, but again, I want you to keep in mind, right? You definitely want to include them, like if you want to do a short food detox, you definitely want to include them, but you also want to include them in your life in some sort of daily routine. You don't have to have, well, some of them you want every day. Some of them you don't need to have every single day, but you want to make sure it's in some sort of consistent rotation. So the first, first and foremost, which you always want to include in any detox uh, regimen is water. Now, I know you're probably expecting some sort of superfood, right? Um, but it really turns out water is the best cleanser that we have. It really helps to support the kidneys to flush out any toxins um, that have accumulated. So you want to make sure that you're giving your body an, what it needs to get everything out of your body. Um, as far as how much you want to um, eat, uh, or excuse me, drink, you want to aim for about nine cups a day for a woman if you're working out you can up that easily because you're, you're perspiring more, right? So you need more water. And I know you guys already know that water is healthy, but my favorite saying is knowing is not the same as doing, right? So really ask yourself, am I drinking that much every single day? And an easy way to check if you are or you're not, um, you can just check the color of your urine. So if it's clear or light yellow, you're okay. If it's dark or medium color, um, you're not drinking enough, you're dehydrated, and so you can stand to use a lot more water. All right, so that's the first thing that you want to add in. The second thing is dark leafy greens. Now this includes things like kale, collard greens, Swiss chard, arugula, spinach, um, pretty much anything that's dark green and leafy, right? Um, and what makes dark leafy greens such potent detoxifiers is the same thing that gives them their dark green color, and that's chlorophyll. Now, chlorophyll has been found to purify and cleanse the blood. It oxygenates the blood and all of the cells. It alkalizes your body. It also has been found to pull heavy metals out of your, out of your blood as well. So for example, if you like to eat fish a lot, right? Most fish is contaminated with mercury, right? Um, you wanna make sure you're eating enough greens to help pull that out of your body. So on top of that, besides just detoxing your body on a cellular level, Greens are also loaded with fiber, so they are going to help cleanse your digestive tract at the same time. So greens must be included in any detox regimen for sure um, and just in your daily life. So as far as how much you want to be consuming daily, you want to aim for three to four cups a day. Um, and that's in your daily life, actually. Um, if you're on a detox, you can even double that if you wanted to, but the minimum at any time is three to four cups. All right. The third food that you want to include in a detox program is going to be chia seeds. Now, you can think of chia seeds as essentially your, like an intestinal broom. They're going to come in and they're going to sweep everything out and make sure that your digestive tract is moving the way that it should be. Um, on top of that, you know, they're just great for overall health. They're loaded with the omega-3 fatty acids, um, which is also great for your skin. They're a great diet food and detox food because they keep you satiated. They give you this feeling of fullness on very few calories, so you're not going to always feel hungry all day long. Um, so chia seeds, you want to aim for about a tablespoon a day. That's all you really need. Um, you could up that. Like if you're on a detox, you wanted to go up to two or three. That's totally fine. Um, and for anyone who's not familiar with chia seeds, because I know this is one's a little bit kind of newer, um, 
they're, the best way I find to um, eat them is to put them in smoothies. So you would just make a chia gel. So you add chia seeds to water. You let that sit for about 10 minutes. And that is going to form into a gel. You throw that into a smoothie. And you can't even taste it at all. Another, uh, sorry, there's hair in my thing. <laughs> um, uh, another great way to get chia is, um, is in chia seed pudding, which is my new favorite way to eat chia. It's so good. If you're on my email list already, you already got the recipe. Um, but if chia is something like you don't really know what to do with and you want to figure out how to use it, you could always go to my website and search it in the box. Um, there's tons of recipes on there. All right, so the fourth detox food um, that I want to mention, and this is probably my favorite and the mis most potent of everything that we talked about, and that is turmeric. So how many people here are eating turmeric? Okay, a few of you, good, awesome. So turmeric is, it's a root. Um, we, we make it into a powder and we use it as a spice. And turmeric is something that um, they've been using in Ayurvedic medicine for thousands of years. So Ayurveda is the ancient Indian form of healing and medicine. And they've always traditionally used it as pretty much a cure-all for everything. And in the past 30 years or so, Western researchers are trying to figure out if science can actually back up all those claims, right? And it can, it turns out. So, I think the most amazing thing about turmeric is that it has been found to actually halt cancer cell growth, which is huge, right? And there have been over a thousand studies that have validated this. So um, very, very potent anti-cancer. Um, on top of that, it's been found to be antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal, right? It's very, very anti-inflammatory. That means it's great for any skin problems, blemishes, it's anti-aging, right? So because it has all of these properties, that validates why it's been used to treat just about everything. Now, when it comes to detoxification in particular, turmeric is so important because it really cleanses and purifies your liver and supports your liver health. So out of all your detox organs, your liver, I don't want to say it's the most important, but it's, it's very important and you really want to make sure that you're always nourishing it. And the reason for that is your liver is essentially your border control for your body. So it gets to, gets to decide what goes in and what doesn't. Right? And so if you think about it, right? if you think about a real border control and you have an employee there who you're overworking, right? you have them on a double shift, so by hour 14, 15, the guy is you know, tired, he's cranky, he's exhausted, he's hungry, right? So he's not going to be working as well as he could be, not as efficient, and there's a possibility that things are going to start slipping through that shouldn't be getting through. And it's the same thing with your liver. So ordinarily, what your liver does, right, whenever you eat something, about 99% of the nutrients have to pass through your, through your liver before they go on to the rest of your body. So if there's vitamins and minerals, your, your liver is like, okay, keep going, right? But if there's a toxin, um, it's going to identify it, and it's either going to break it down uh, into something less harmful, or it's going to package it up and send it packing so it gets eliminated, right, in the toilet. What happens when you're overworking your liver, just like when you're overworking wa the custom patrol guy, right? It's gonna, you know, it's gonna get sluggish and it's not gonna work as well. And there's a possibility that things like carcinogenic substances can get through into your bloodstream. And that's when you're gonna start seeing problems, right? And that's when your body is gonna start sending out that SOS, that, you know, something's gotta change. So those are the four, um, what I think some of the most potent um, detoxing foods. Um, so again, that's water, uh, dark leafy greens, chia seeds, and turmeric. So I hope, um, I hope that's been helpful. Has, uh, do you guys feel like you learned something new today? Is like turmeric new to a lot of you guys? Okay, awesome. So if you don't have turmeric, you definitely, that's definitely something you want to add in um, for sure. You have a question? Sure. Okay, so yeah, so um, the difference between flaxseed and chia seed, um, they do have similar properties, right? They're going to have those omega fats that are really good, really, really anti-inflammatory. They're both high in fiber. Chia, I tend to prefer only because um, there is some concern with flaxseed having phytoestrogens. 
and you don't want to be like people who are consuming a ton of it, it could potentially cause problems, right? So chia is a bit of a safer version and you're getting the same benefits. I believe chia is higher in fiber and the reason I really like chia um, is because um, usually you want to hydrate it, right? So you could eat it dry, but because the properties of chia, it absorbs up to 10 times its weight in water. Um, you generally want to soak it first before you ingest it, because if you eat it dry, it's going to soak up everything inside, and it's probably not going to feel too good. So you want to soak your chia before you, before you eat it. Um, and chia, you don't really have to worry about you know, how much you're consuming, whereas flax, you want to just kind of keep an eye on that. Good. Yeah. Sorry, I can't hear you. Turmeric? Yeah. Sure, that's, that's a great question. So the turmeric, you want to have about a teaspoon a day, and that's like all throughout the year. Um, so people in India, that's the typical amount that they consume daily, um, and they ha tend to have lower incidences of like disease and cancer that are more common over here. So they say one teaspoon is what you want to aim for. Um, you could up that during a detox if you really wanted to. Um, but it is pretty powerful and potent stuff, so you should be fine with just one teaspoon. As far as how to, how to use it, so you've probably already eating, eaten turmeric and you don't know it. Um, they use it to color, um, sometimes they use it to color like American cheese, that bright yellow. Turmeric is like neon yellow and it will stain things. Like it will stain your hands a little bit, like you have to wash it off. Um, and that just goes to show you how potent the antioxidants are because that, that's what gives it its color. Um, so how you want to use it, um, you can use it in stir fries, right? You just heat the pan, put a little oil. You could put, use turmeric. I like to mix it with other spices, like in particular black pepper is really great with it. Cumin is really great. Paprika, um, cayenne, they all kind of go well with it. Um, so you could use it in stir fries. You can use it in grain dishes. Um, you can pretty much sprinkle it on just about anything, and it really doesn't have a very strong taste. So, um, but it'd be a good thing for you to experiment with and see. Okay. As pills. Yes, that's totally fine. You can take it as a pill. It, the pill is usually just going to be the powdered, like, the, the powder inside a capsule. So that's totally good. Yep. That's, that's a really good question, actually. I'm glad that you brought that up. So, yep. Um, so during a detox, it doesn't mean you just have to eat, like, celery sticks and carrot sticks, right? You can actually make meals and you can totally use spices. So I'm gonna recommend organic spices, um, but as long as they're just like, that's all it is and there's nothing else. Like sometimes spice mixes have a lot of other stuff like anti-caking agents thrown in, so that stuff you don't want, but regular spice should be totally fine. Sure. With exercise? On a detox? Okay, so that's a really great pr question. So when you're doing a food detox, um, you're still going to be pretty much eating. Um, you're, I mean, you're eating three meals a day, so there's no problem. Like, you're not going to pass out when, when you're doing, you know, exercise or anything like that. So that's why I, I prefer food detoxes because you don't have to worry about that. Sometimes with a juice, um, juice detox, you want to be careful, especially if it's on the longer side, like five days, four days even, um, because then you're, you, it's a possibility that you can start breaking down, you know, your muscle instead of your fat when you're not consuming enough calories. No, you know, that, oh, I'm so glad you brought that up. Okay, um, there's plenty of protein in plant-based foods, believe it or not. You can get just as much, like, just as much and, uh, you know, ample amount that you need for the day in beans and lentils and split peas. You know, believe it or not, things like vegetables, uh, to some extent, pretty much all have a little bit of protein in them. So even your dark leafy greens, things like that. So um, you'll be fine on the protein. As long, that's why it's really important if you do want to do a food de detox, you don't want to just do it on the fly. You do want to, um, you know, have a meal plan um, ready. You want to make sure that your kitchen is stocked, right? Um, because otherwise, it's very easy to kind of all fall apart. You want to know what you're eating, making sure that you're getting enough um, of everything that you need. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Honey. Um, I think that's, that's probably fine. I would use a raw honey, not um, like not the clear ones in the little bear. Um, I would definitely use a raw honey. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah
Yeah, a raw honey is better. A raw honey is always going to be better. It has more enzymes and nutrients in it than anything processed. Um, honey is also great if you um, have allergies, actually. It can help mitigate any allergies. So raw honey is totally fine. Yeah. Okay, so that's a, that's a great question, too. So what I would recommend if you're really hooked on the coffee, you probably want to detox off the coffee first before you do like the whole food detox. Um, and basically the easiest way to do that without getting a headache is to taper it down. So take like a week period and like first you'll drink as much as you normally do, like for the first two or three days. And then every single day you're gonna taper off. So maybe you'll do 75% regular coffee, 25% uh, decaf, right? And then it becomes 50-50 and then 75-25 the other way. And that's how you're going to taper off without getting the, the headaches. Green tea or ginseng during a detox? Um, you know, I mean, you could. Um, it's, you don't need to, but you could if you wanted to. I don't think it would like inhibit you in any way. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's a great question too. So, um, you know, sometimes we think of a detox as just something that's like food related, right? Or alcohol or drinks, whatever. Um, but really, you know, there's some merit in like detoxing your whole life, really. So, um, you know, yes, you want to focus on the food, but also you want to focus on the stress, right? So if you can detox as much stress out of your life, that's always going to be helpful. Um, baths are a great way. Heat, like sauna, helps you sweat out toxins. So that's a great to do during a detox if you have access to a, a sauna somewhere um, to sweat it out. Um, and yeah, you want to be gentle on your body. And it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. So you also want to go in with the mindset that you're not going to be berating yourself the whole time if you do mess up, because then it kind of like defeats the whole purpose, right? So you want to go in with like, you know, uh, a gentle mind that, you know, you want to be positive that you can do it, but you don't want to beat yourself up if you can't. Um, but as far as what else to do, I would just say the sauna is probably the best thing and the stress reduction. Yep. The fresh nut butter, is that what you said? Yeah, I mean, if there's nothing else added to it, that's, that's okay. The only thing I will mention, I know it tastes really good. Sometimes, it, I mean, it is a little calorie dense, so you just wanna be careful in that regard. But other than that, you can use fresh um, nut butter in a detox, yeah. And I would, I would, I would say not peanut butter. Any, anything else, like raw almond butter should be fine, cashew butter. I would just stay away from the peanut butter because that can, be allergenic and not good for your detox system. Okay. Okay. So one thing I did forget to mention, another reason that I prefer a food detox over like any other type of detox, right? Like a fast. For the average person who is not already eating very clean, you're going to get some symptoms and they're going to be miserable. So actually when... Um, <laughs> One of my clients, she, she just left, she was in the class before, and she was telling me um, that her and her husband went, on, or fiance rather, um, went on a detox. And she's already cleaned up her habits. She's been working with me for like a year. Um, and so she's, she's totally fine. Um, but she's like, her, bo you know, her fiance is miserable, right? So because he's going through a lot of these withdrawal symptoms. So it's definitely true that you're going to you know, especially if you're going off of caffeine, if you're going off sugar, it's possible you're going to be moody, like you're not going to be happy, right? So at least when you're eating food, um, it, it blunts that a little bit. So it's not as bad. I feel like when you're doing a food detox, you're, you're less likely to get those symptoms, right? Um, and you're going to feel full and satisfied. So you're not going to add on to it that you're hungry, right? So you're not going to be cranky that you didn't eat. Um, so I think the food detox is definitely the gentlest way to, to do it. Um, and if you do experience symptoms, you kind of want to push through it, right? So I think um, usually whenever we feel like pain, you know, we just want to stop right away. But sometimes you have to think about it probably like the way you think about Pure Bar, right? So I remember the first time I took a class here. I was really pumped. I thought it was amazing. I left. I felt great. The next day I could not walk, okay? 
And I worked in an office at the time where I had to go up and down like five flights of stairs every day. So it was miserable for the three days following uh, my first pure work class. But I also felt great at the same time because I was like, oh my god, my legs are so strong now, I'm going to be so firm, right? So during a detox or any sort of diet regimen, like I always like to tell people that you want to think of that in between period when you're kind of miserable a little bit, right? You know you're doing something good for your body. Um, you want to kind of push through it and get to the other side because um, that's where you're going to see the results. Of course, listen to your body. Like if you're that miserable, then you might want to see why and change course. But for the most part, if it's just like you know that you're cranky because you're getting off of sugar, you want to push through it and know that you're doing the best for your body and you'll get to that other side where you feel better again. Okay. Yep. Okay, so, well, when you're doing a food detox, you're going to be eating three meals a day, right? So you're eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's just that you're only eating, like, the cleanest possible food. So in that case, it, it doesn't really matter. I mean, what you want to do is you want to kind of keep up some of those healthy things, like if you're eating more salads and greens and vegetables and all those things, you want to keep incorporating those in. Um, so it's, it's not much, too much of an issue. It's when you start to do a juice fast, that's when you want to be more careful um, because you're you have stopped like processing food for a few days, um, especially if it's four or five days. So you always want to start with like the gentlest foods. So sometimes they use melons, right, or like salads or some lightly steamed vegetables, like the first day after the cleanse. And then after that, you kind of just start adding in little by little um, some kind of like cooked grains after a couple days. Um, but you don't want to like go like do a juice fast and then go eat like a cheeseburger and pizza and like all that stuff because you're probably going to get sick. So you want to just start with the plant-based stuff first, reintroducing like the gentle things, and then after a couple days, when your digestion's back and running, you should be able to eat again. Although, like we said, we don't want to go back to the really bad ways. But, yep. Sure. Um, so I have like a, a three-day detox. So usually when I do send one to my clients. So a breakfast would be either a really big smoothie. Um, so it's going to have things like chia seeds in it, um, you know, and all fruit basically in water. Um, or it might be like oatmeal with an apple or pear um, or, and some nuts in it, right? Um, and then for lunch would be like a big salad um, with like a ton of stuff on top. So one thing, I like sometimes people feel like salad's not filling. It's like because you're not putting enough stuff on it. So my salads are always like huge, and there's a ton of stuff on there that's going to keep you satiated. So vegetables, um, nuts, seeds, like all those things are on top. And then um, for dinner, it could be either a salad or it could be like lentils. Um, it could be, um, you know, a little bit of brown rice. Um, but it's mostly going to focus on vegetables um, for all of the meals. And, well, breakfast is usually going to be fruit. So it's definitely enough to keep you satiated. And on food detoxes, like if you did get hungry in between, like you could snack on an apple or a banana or something, like a piece of fruit would be totally fine. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, you, I mean, you want to limit your, your fats. So for dressings, I always prefer whole food dressings. So using like an avocado, turning that into a dressing, using... Um, uh, tahini, which is um, sesame seed, like butter. Um, so using things like that that are, that are oily and fatty um, that are going to give you that taste and going to give you that flavor, but at least they have the fiber, they have nutrients, they have vitamins, um, and they're not just pure fat. Okay, so I think this is the, be our last one. Yep. Yes. Um, it doesn't have to be three meals. Um, you want to always listen to your body. So if you're hungry, um, you know, in between the meals, here's the thing. They're, the meals are designed to be very filling. So when you're eating all whole food plant-based stuff like vegetables, they're loaded with fiber. And fiber is going to fill you up so that you don't want to eat other stuff. So when we're, like, if we feel like we eat a lot, like it could be that we're eating empty calories. Um, and so we're eating, but it's not satiating us. And that's why we want to keep eating more. But when you're going on like a food detox, um, when you're eating really um, uh, fiber, like fiber-filled foods, you're not going to want to eat as much now, uh, or as often, I should say. 
Um, now, if you are hungry, eating fruit in between, eating you know vegetables, crudite, you could have like some you know uh, zucchini or cucumber with guacamole, something like that is totally fair game. The the main thing that you want to be strict about is what you're putting into your body, not so much when. All right, so um, so I want to thank you again, everyone, for coming. This has been a lot of fun. Um, you definitely have some time to go get some juice. I do want to um, just mention, so if anyone's wondering what, what I do outside of, of this, um, so I work with clients one-on-one -on -one, um, as, as a health coach, and I basically work with people to figure out what their body is telling them. So those SOS signs that I talked about, right? So whether it's weight gain or low energy or... Um, you know, skin problems, whatever it is, digestive issues, I work with them to kind of figure out what's causing it and then figure out what um, dietary changes or lifestyle changes can be made to either reduce or eliminate all those symptoms. I also do um, a really fun group health coaching program, which is pretty much the same thing, except it's in a group format. We actually meet very close to here. And um, I like to call it the healthy version of Weight Watchers um, because we, I really teach you like how to take care of, like take control of your life and your body, right? Because everybody's body is different. So those SOS signals are gonna be different for everyone's body. So really learning how to interpret them and to listen to your body. Um, it's essentially like a detox for your whole life. Um, and you also have a whole support team you know, at the same time. So um, if you're interested in either one-on-one -on -one or group coaching, um, you can let Amber know who is floating around. There she is. Um, just let her know and she'll just mark your name down and I could, you know, get in touch with you um, next week to kind of talk about that if you wanted. Um, and if you enjoyed today and you want to come to more events like this, I host a lot of nutrition workshops. I also teach healthy cooking classes. Um, I send out healthy recipes and nutrition tips. So if you like this kind of stuff, make sure you're on the email list if you're not already. Um, and so you'll get invites and kind of stay in the loop with, um, with everything. So, so that's it. Thank you. I'll stick around. So if you have questions, you can come say hi. Thank you, guys.